Hello and welcome to an exciting new experiment called Julianne Actually Films a YouTube Video. Just kidding. It's an exciting new experiment called Julianne is sitting on a chair. I know. I mean, you probably don't know. Uh, <laughs> I know, but you probably don't know that every video pretty much previously to this, I have been sitting on the floor. Um, the only time I have not been sitting on the floor is when I've been standing to film a Illumicray unboxing, either with the box on a table, like I used to do it when um, I lived in my old flat, or um, on my chest of drawers, um, which I move over to be right in front of this bookcase, normally it lives next to my desk, um, since I moved into the house. Um, so yeah, exciting. I'm on a chair. Why am I on a chair? It's because um, during December I was doing this 25 days of dress thing on Instagram and so I set my sock boxes up to be really tall. And I have a lot of space in this room right now. It's full of stuff on the floor. It's really bad. It's no, I'm not going to show you because it's terrible. Um, and if I move soft boxes down to be the right height for me sitting on the floor, they'll be really annoying and in the way. Whereas if they're tall, they're slightly less annoying and in the way. They're still annoying and in the way. But do you know what's even more annoying than having soft boxes in the way whenever you try to move stuff around the room? Putting up soft boxes. Hate it. Do it once a year if I possibly. <laughs> So now they're up, they're stuck up until it is sunny enough on a regular basis for me to take them down. So there we go. That's um, my exciting update. Um, so you may have read the title of this video and noted that this is a November and December wrap up. Why did I not do a November wrap up? Number one is because I only read two books. <laughs> in November because of NaNoWriMo um, and the other reason is that I was trying to finish NaNoWriMo in December and so I thought am I going to take time out of trying to finish my novel not finish NaNoWriMo I actually did finish NaNoWriMo I won NaNoWriMo I wrote 50,000 words in November but the novel I was writing is 90,000 words so um, I wanted to finish that off in December and so I thought do I really want to take time out of writing to review two books? No, I don't. It's not worth it. I'm going to do a combined um, November and December wrap up in January, which is what I am doing now. Um, so I'm going to look at my phone to remind myself what books I actually read in those two months, um, because I've read quite a few in January so far. And also a lot of the books that I read in um, November and December were digital. So here we go. So the first book out of the two that I read in November is around here somewhere. Here it is. <laughs> here it is. Um, it's Charm by Sarah Pinbra, um, which I read because it's kind of a kind of a spooky. It's not really spooky. It's a fairy tale retelling, um, and I knew it'd be kind of creepy and dark. Um, and I read the first in the series, what was that called? What does it say? Poison, um, which is the Snow White retelling, and I thought it was okay. Um, I didn't really love it. So I picked up Charm with some trepidation because I, um, used to be a big fan of Cinderella as a concept, as an idea, and then when I was at university I realised that it's not very feminist, she basically waits for a man to save her, and I was against Cinderella from all points onwards. So having not particularly loved Poison, I picked up Charm with some trepidation, but I was like, it's not very long, I know fairy tales, it'd be fine, and actually I massively preferred it to Poison, really really liked it, and I'm quite excited to read the third in this series, which looking at the list again it's called beauty which i assume is a beauty and the beast retelling and beauty and the beast is basically my favorite fairy tale um if the retelling's done right <laughs> um so the original fairy tale i'm like mm, bad times um but there are many retellings i love including the live action um Disney film version which i count as a retelling because it does away with the stockholm syndrome part um kind of in, in a you know in a better way than the original did um and valiant by holly black um love that love that no stockholm syndrome in that one um so yeah 
uh where was i so yeah i'm actually really excited to read it now um i think it's purple as well i think it's beautiful purple hardback so if i can get my hands on that not sure i can um at this point because this book um was published in 2013 and i don't think the um third one came out long after um i think they, they may even have come out all at once i don't know um but yeah uh, I think I got this for free at the first Nine Worlds. Um, that was a long time ago, probably 2013. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, uh, really liked it. Um, and then I ended pretty much my favourite book reading, if I remember correctly. Let me just have a quick flick through. Yep, yep, that's the last time I read a paper book. I haven't read a paper book since. Um, so the next book I finished in November was If Every Day Was Christmas by Donna Ashcroft. So um, a couple of years ago I got really into Christmas books and every year since I've been reading more and more Christmas books each year. Um, and I wanted to get a jump start because I'd requested so many off of NetGalley because I read so many print books in September I had one um, quite a lot of NetGalley requests. So I have this system where I have to read two print books for every NetGalley request and that's request not successful um approval um so i have like a log and i write down um like every two print books what i've requested off of netgalley um so anyway i had a lot a lot of netgalley requests because i read so many print books um and so i um requested a bunch of christmas stuff and this was the first one i read um it's about a um a woman who runs a christmas shop um in a small town in scotland and um she's got family issues you know for christmas was like her um her favorite day of the year up till now um christmas day because it's the only time that her parents could properly get along um but this year she's decided she is done with all of that crap and um she's gonna stay in her little village town small town whatever it is in scotland um and have christmas quietly by herself and not get involved in the family drama uh, this year but then her mum and sister turn up meanwhile there's also a new man in the locality um a uh who is basically a rock star who wrote a song called if every day was christmas um and he is hiding out um in this town and hoping that no one recognizes him um because he's had a bad breakup uh, anyway he's super grumpy doesn't like christmas um shenanigans occur she decorates his house for him he's like i don't like it um yeah, yeah they, they sulk each other a bit and yeah uh yeah meanwhile she has to deal with her family issues and this reindeer and he's super cute and i really enjoyed it um speaking of super cute the next book i finished reading i may have loved even more um which was the 12 days of christmas by lizzie jane also um, an ebook I got from NetGalley. Um, so when I requested this, I didn't realise it was um, an American publication. So um, usually I only request um, British Christmas books because um, I'm not into a lot of the tropes that get used in American romantic fiction and most Christmas books um, from the US are romantic fiction. Um, whereas as you'll see, um, a lot of the Christmas books I read this year aren't actually romances. They may have romantic elements to them, but they are primarily not romances. Um, they're just contemporary books that are set at Christmas, that deal with family and community and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, so yeah, I was a bit, I was a bit dubious when I started reading it and realised it was set in the US, but actually I really loved it. Um, it was a lot more community focused than other books, um, in this in this genre as i say that i've heard about and it was just really cute so um it's about a uh i think she's a fashion photographer who normally lives in new york and she's gone to um stay with her grandparents who run a dog shelter in this um very stars hollow-esque if you love young or girls um small town and um while she's there she runs she gets on the bad side of like the local councilman or one of the local councilmen um who is um sort of the reluctant parent to his orphaned niece and um he's just had to cut the funding for the dog shelter that, that her grandparents run and 
it's yeah if you like um if you like Gilmore Girls and if you like Parks and Rec I feel like you'd be really <laughs> into the tropes um that this book focuses on um and you know what I actually loved it I loved all the details about dogs I loved the small town vibes um and I loved the romance between them which is which is a really sweet romance um which takes a long time to develop and involves the whole community having to come together to push them together and yeah it's just really really cute and I enjoyed it and I would recommend it the next book I finished reading in December um yes <laughs> yes it was charm and if every day was Christmas that I read in November um, was Romancing the Beat story structure for romance novels. Um, so this is a little, this is a really brief little um, guide to, um, as it says on the tin, story structure to, for romance novels, talking about the different beats um, and that kind of thing. Um, and I found it reasonably useful. Um, with the big caveat that I was planning to write a romance novel <laughs> for NaNoWriMo and it kind of turned out to not be a romance novel but a, ro a novel that does have a romantic plot line as part of it but it's not it's not like the, the full focus of it so um it was it was really helpful but not so much for structuring my novel but for more making me understand um I guess the full depth of the structure because what basically happened was um, it became a friend romance as much as a romance and so some of the beats that would have been the romantic beats became um, like high points and low points in the friendship development so yeah <laughs> uh, kind of a complicated review there but um, it was really useful just not in the exact way that I wanted it to be useful when I started but it's fine because I'm really happy with how the story turned out um, even though it turned out not to be a romance. Uh, the next book I finished reading in December was The Six Tales of Christmas by Anne Marie Ryan. Um, so this is another Christmas book um, and this one is set in a um, in a small town or village. I never can keep it straight with this small town versus village thing. Um, but this one's in the Cotswolds and um, the um, main characters run a bookshop. Um, so it's an older couple and um, she inherited the bookshop from her mum and she loves it and she um, really really wants to keep it open. Her husband had some, I think it was heart trouble and so she's been hiding from him that the bookshop's under threat because he doesn't want him to get upset about it and um, you know she doesn't know what to do, the bailiffs are literally knocking at the door and she decides um, uh, to kind of like they, they decide together I guess really to um, send uh, six books out to people in the local area who really need a book to cheer them up and they ask for nominations on social media and they also just pick a couple of people and they deliver the books and stuff occurs you know it brings people together um it's kind of a will they won't they and will they save the bookshop um there's some uh people whose lives are forever changed by this happy occurrence and it's just you know it's a, it's a really cute christmas um story um, I really enjoyed it. It was very Christmassy. Um, probably not as Christmassy as if every day was Christmas, but um, still full of that festive spirit. Sorry, I, when I'm on a when I'm on a spinnable chair, I just find myself trying to spin. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, the next book I finished reading in um, oh, I nearly forgot to mention that one was also from Nat Galley. Uh, the next book I finished reading was also from Heck Alley, but not a Christmas book. Um, and that was The Winds Are Not by S.J. Bennett, better known as Sophia Bennett, who is one of my favourite YA authors. Um, I absolutely love her books. Love Song, that was um, my second favourite book of the year a couple of years ago. Um, and I absolutely love um, Following Ophelia and the sequel, whose name escapes me right now. Oh, um something Venus. Anyway, 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 I love her YA writing. Um, so I was really excited to see that she's now writing mysteries for adults. 
um, in which the detective is the queen. <laughs> it was just really, really cute. Um, so it's mostly set at Winter Castle um, after a um, like the, the night of the party where some guests are staying over at um, the castle, um, someone dies and um, they try and spin it as a suicide but the Queen suspects it was a murder and it's not it's not so much from the Queen's perspective as from the perspective of her um, assistant private secretary um, who is a, a um, younger woman who you know finds herself in this strange um situation where she's sort of helping the queen investigate a murder but sort of kind of acting as her eyes and ears a lot of the time it's a very interesting concept and i really enjoyed it and i'm looking forward to reading the second in that series the next book i finished reading not for net daddy lima book um was the duke and i by julia quinn um so uh everybody's getting really excited about the bridgerton series on netflix which i haven't seen yet and i wanted to read the books first or at least you know give them a go see what they were all about um so i thought i'd start the duke and i um i found read i found regency romance in general really easy to read really like unput downable there's something about the simplicity of um the characters' lives, in a way, like you know, they they're, they're really they're really wealthy and they don't have jobs, <laughs> so it's a lot of just like going to parties and sitting around in each other's living rooms or drawing rooms, I guess. Um, yeah, and yeah, there's just something really, really like um, there's just something really easy to read about these rich people with uncomplicated lives. Um, but equally I really enjoy um I really enjoy books where things aren't so simple and uncomplicated and they kind of delve a bit more into the politics and the and the um culture but um as far as the, the more simplistic <laughs> interpretations of the Regency era go um I do still find them really Moorish and and that was the case with this series um The Duke and I has a questionable bit. I mean, you couldn't Google this in like two seconds and um, find out what the big problem is that a lot of people have with the Duke and I. And yeah, it is. You're like, but this is supposed to be a romance, and there are several things that like you were off-putting about it, and it's the same in the second one as well. Um, I guess these books were written in. Um, the early 2000s and there's some there's some stuff in there that i don't necessarily think a author writing now would include there's a lot of men going you're my wife therefore i own you and this is like supposed to be sexy i guess but it's not for me um <laughs> uh so yeah yeah uh i did find it really moorish but um yeah it, I kind of finished it and I was like, oh, well, that's fine, I'll, I'll read the next one, you know, it's, it's, it's escapist, it's easy to read, but I didn't love it. Um, and so yeah, I did start The the Viscount Who Loved Me, which is the um, second in the series straight after, and I kind of found it really similar. <laughs> so as you can I was like, this is basically the same book with a few changes, right? Um, which, you know, like, romance can be you know i hesitate to say formulaic because you know a lot of different stories have a formula to them and that doesn't mean that they don't you know say interesting things but i found the viscount who loved me to be too similar um to the duke and i i kind of i kind of read it and i was like okay the, the circumstances of romance are interesting but like a lot of it is too similar um, it kind of followed this, it kind of followed the same pattern and yeah so I um, even though it's less problematic than the Duke and I I was like eh. <laughs> um, and in between the two of them I read Weather by Jenny Offal which is actually for my book club at work but I didn't end up going to my book club at work because we had a um, I had, I had a work event on at the same time and so I couldn't go to book club at work. Um, Weather is sort of a, it's a strange kind of stream of consciousness kind of story um, about a woman who works for a academic who um, talks about climate change 
and so there's lots of stuff about climate change and like an oncoming apocalypse but also like being a mother and a wife and yeah it, it was it was interesting I didn't feel like any any of it was going to be particularly memorable for me but I did enjoy it as I was listening to the audiobook which I also got for the library um, so yeah, I've already covered The Viscount Who Loved Me, so I'll move on to An Offer From A Gentleman, which is the third in the Bridgerton series, which I much preferred to the other two. So it is blatantly a kind of Cinderella retelling. Um, <laughs> blatantly. Um, like, I got probably like a third through, and I was like, this is Cinderella. Like, um, I kind of got bits of that from the start because the main character is um uh essentially she's been made to work as a servant for her um stepmother and stepsisters um because her father her father died and left her some money but her stepmother kept that a secret um so she's yeah she's basically been working as a servant and um her um her fellow servants like help her go to a ball because like you know she was born a rich person so she should always have access to that level of privilege bit of cognitive dissonance there i'm like but i know that you like her and stuff um but also this is a bit weird like you know but yeah um so they help her go to a ball and that's where she you know she meets the bridgerton brother who she is gonna fall in love with um but she's like working as a, she, it's like a masquerade ball so he doesn't see who she is and then she runs away and he's just left with a glove. <laughs> see, it's so Cinderella. Um, and then he has to try to work out who she is. Meanwhile, she gets kicked out by her stepmother because her stepmother's like, you've been stealing from me. Um, you wore my shoes. I've caught you. Um, because she didn't clean her shoe properly. And she ends up like moving through different households, working as a servant. And like eventually he comes to her rescue and yeah, and I've banged on about this too long, but it's the blatant Cinderella retelling. And despite all these problems with it, I actually really enjoyed it. <laughs> As I say, it was my favourite one out of that series so far. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just because it had a different plot from the other two and I kind of thought the first two had the same plot. Um, so yeah <laughs> and that was my final book read in December um and yeah as I say I really liked that one um it's definitely the one I would probably be most interested to see on screen um so as far as I'm aware I think the first season has covered most of the first book um obviously I'm, again I haven't seen it yet as I'm recording this um and you know I'm all right about the second one fine but um yeah when they get to the third one, I'll be really excited because I would actually like to see that. Um, I think it kind of covered some more interesting ground than the other two. There were some more interesting settings, some more interesting stuff being talked about. And yeah, quite a fun Cinderella retelling. As ridiculous and overblown as it is. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was my um, book thread in the last couple of months of 2021. Um, you will see me again soon because I need to film um, two Lone Crate unboxings, which I'm probably doing one. I need to film my um, best books read in 2021 video, which obviously I am very excited about. I uh, have not made that list yet, I need to whittle it down. And I uh, have a couple of more ideas bubbling away in my brain here. So yeah, keep watching. Please do subscribe to this video. Um, subscribe to this video? You don't want to subscribe to this video. You've already seen it. Subscribe to this channel if you would like to see more from me. Um, whether I'll be on a chair next time or the floor remains to be seen. Um, I kind of like this angle and this view and getting to see a little bit more of my stuff. Although you can see how truly messy my bookshelves are. Um, so yeah, I think I'll just have to see how it actually looks when I get it up on my computer and I'm not filming it anymore. Um, yeah, chair or no chair, there will be more exciting stuff coming up, so do subscribe if you want to see more from me. Um, do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, all my social media bot links, all my social media links, I can talk, all my social media links are in the description. Um, 
And um, if you would like to read more books but don't know where to start, check out my free e-course, Ignite Your Passion for Reading, Fall in Love with Books, which is linked in the description box below. And if you would like to read a friend mance set during the um, first two weeks of the first UK lockdown uh, last year, um, the link to Unlocking Lockdown, which is the name of that novella, um, is in the description box as well. So yeah check all of that stuff out um, and you will see me again soon. Bye!